Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum students. Uh, today we are going to start the regulation of the thyroid hormone. This is a university question that how the thyroid hormones they are regulated. We all know that from the hypothalamus there are certain releasing hormones are released or releasing factors are released which act on the glands to produce the hormones. So in case of thyroid from the hypothalamus, thyrotropin releasing hormone is released. And this hormone, they uh, it uh, it binds with the receptors on the NTF H3, and the TSH secreting cells are called the thyrotropes. So thyroid releasing hormone, uh, they acts on the thyrotropes. It acts through the by the activation of second messenger system, which is uh, phospholipase C. It uh, activates phospholipase C, and then uh, through calcium ion and diacylglycerol. It is exert its effects. Then uh, from the NTF H3, thyroid stimulating hormone is released. Thyroid stimulating hormone, it goes towards the thyroid gland and then uh, TSH acts by the activation of adenylate cyclase. And uh, it causes activation of CMP. CMP then causes activation of protein kinase A. And then through protein phosphorylation, there will be secretion of thyroid hormones. We see an other diagram. Here also it is clear that thyrotropin releasing hormone that is released from the hypothalamus, it goes to the anterior pitch tree gland through hypothalamic hypophysic portal blood. Then TSH is released and TSH then acts on the thyroid gland to cause the secretion of thyroxine. And then thyroxine has, uh, we know, multiple effects on the body metabolism. And then there is a negative feedback. When thyroid hormones are released, they cause feedback suppression of TSH. So uh, whenever the thyroid hormones they are released in excess amount, for example, in hyperthyroidism, there will be decreased TSH because it decreases its secretion through negative feedback. And this is also a university question that what are the effects of thyroid stimulating hormone? So what does the TSH do? Um, it increases the proteolysis of the thyroglobulin. And so it is involved in the secretion of thyroid hormones. It also increases the iodide trapping. It activates the iodide pump and uh, increase. So the iodide trapping will be increased and we all know that iodine is required for the formation of thyroid hormones. Then uh, TSH, it increases the iodination of tyrosine, which is also another important step in the formation of thyroid hormone. Then TSH increases the secretory activity of the cells. It increases the size and secretory activity of the cells. Uh, now moving on to the clinical disorders of uh, thyroid gland, uh, we have uh, hyperthyroidism, Hyperthyroidism is the overproduction of thyroid hormones by the thyroid gland. This is the overproduction. We have another term, thyrotoxicosis. Thyrotoxicosis is the increased circulating levels of thyroid hormones. And uh, there are, in, in hyperthyroidism, there will be increase in the gland size. Enlargement of the thyroid gland takes place. We have a number of there are a number of causes of hyperthyroidism, and the most commonest cause is the grave disease. It is an autoimmune disease, uh, which means that the certain immunoglobulins are formed against the thyroid gland. So, thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins, which are called TSI, they are formed against the TSH receptors in the thyroid gland, and uh, these uh, antibodies they stimulate the thyroid gland to form more thyroid hormones. We have studied before that when there, there is increased level of thyroid hormone, they will cause uh, negative feedback to TSH. TSH will be decreased. So in hyperthyroidism, T3 and T4 are increased and TSH will be decreased. Then uh, we have uh, the exophthalmos in grave disease. We will study in this lecture afterwards but exophthalmos is the hallmark of uh, grave disease. So uh, Hyperthyroidism can also result from a thyroid adenoma, which is a localized tumor, or it may also occur due to multinodular goiter. This is the toxic multinodular goiter. As you can see, multiple nodules are present, and they also cause secretion of more thyroid hormones. Uh, the difference is that a grave disease is autoimmune. TSIs are present, which activate the thyroid gland, 
and here this is uh, it may be uh, due to uh, uh, adenoma it may be benign or cancer or it may be this is multinodular goiter which cause formation of increased thyroid hormones now uh, something related with the clinical features what are the various signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism as we know that thyroid hormone has got the excitatory effect on the cns so a patient has got the excitability nervousness or anxiety paranoid condition uh, also, the most important effect of thyroid hormone is to increase the basal metabolic rate. So when basal metabolic rate is more and more heat is producing in the body, so there will be intolerance to heat and excessive sweating. Uh, this is the picture uh, showing some of the clinical important clinical features of uh, thyroid hormone. This is the picture showing some of the important clinical features of hyperthyroidism. So patient is likely to be nervous, irritable. As I've told you, uh, patient has having extremely fatigue uh, because of the exhausting effect of thyroid hormone on muscles, but at the same time, insomnia. Patient can't sleep, although he is fatigued, but he cannot sleep. It's because thyroid hormone has excitatory effect on synapses. So when there is more thyroid hormone, the patient cannot sleep. Now, as far as GIT concern, um, excessive thyroid hormone, they uh, increase the motility of the GIT. So patient is having diarrhea, weight loss. Uh, then a very important clinical sign is the tremors, uh, shaking hands. Tremors, uh, it's not like the Parkinson's, which are the coarse tremors here. There are fine muscle tremors. And the clinician it sees the tremor by placing the paper on the extended fingers and note the degree of vibration. So uh, tremors, they are due to the increased activity of synapses that control the muscle tone. Then I have told you that there is increased body temperature, patient feeling of warm, increased sweating, moist skin, and then we have the hair loss. There will be enlarged thyroid gland in, uh, because uh, in hyperthyroidism, there will be increased uh, number of cells and increase secretory activity of the cells. Then a very, very important clinical sign is the tachycardia. This is uh, very important for the physician because whenever a patient comes to with the history of palpitation, with a complaint of palpitation, and on examination, if the, the he is tachycardic, then we will go to see first the thyroid function test. So if tachycardia plus the, there may be uh, in, increased cardiac output or arrhythmia, increased pulse pressure, then we have the muscle cramps and the muscle weakness. How the muscle weakness develop? Because of the catabolic effect of the thyroid hormone. Because we have studied that uh, overall effect of thyroid hormone is catabolic, though it increases protein synthesis, but in high concentration, it cause protein catabolism. So here in hyperthyroidism, more thyroid hormones are present. So it causes protein catabolism and there will be muscle weakness. And then uh, in females, there will be menstrual cycle disorders. Irregular uh, menstrual cycle, there may be menorrhagia or there may be polymenorrhea. So these were the general sign and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Now this is exophthalmos. Ex exophthalmos is the hallmark of grave disease. Whenever a patient comes with a grave disease, there will be the protrusion of the eyeball. And protrusion is so much that it stretches the optic nerve enough, it can cause, uh, it can damage the vision. And the cause of the exophthalmos is the edematous swelling of the retroorbital tissue. In the, uh, in the retroorbital area, there will be swelling, there will be edema, plus degenerative changes in the extraocular muscles. And both these effects, the degeneration in muscles and the swelling in the retroorbital area, it pushes the eye forward and the sclera, white sclera is visible. As you can see here, the white sclera is visible more and the eyes are bulging forward. It's because of this uh, and swelling. And also in the patient of exophthalmos, there will be uh, TSIs are present in most of the patients. TSIs are present, which found in most patients, TSIs are present that react with the eye muscles. Now let's see what are the investigations we will do. 
to diagnose. There are thyroid function tests whenever the patient comes with the clinical sign and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Uh, the clinician will go for the doing thyroid function test. They will be increased T3 and T4. And in hyperthyroidism, due to when they are, whenever they are increased T3 and T4, they will be decreased TSH because of the feedback inhibition. And uh, also their thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, they are found by radioimmunoassay and uh, they are present in the grave disease. But if the hyperthyroidism is due to a thyroid adenoma, then uh, TSI will be low. Uh, now, what is the treatment of hyperthyroidism? Surgical removal of the gland is the definitive treatment of uh, hyperthyroidism. And once the whole gland is removed, the patient may become hypothyroid. So he or she will have to be on hormone replacement therapy throughout the whole life. Uh, and then we have the antithyroid drugs, thiocyanate, propyl thiouracil, and the iodides in high concentration. So we will uh, see briefly the mechanism of all these drugs. First of all, thiocyanate. Thiocyanate cause competitive inhibition of iodide transport into the cells. So iodide trapping is decreased. And when decreased iodide comes into the cell, so obviously it will stop the formation of thyroid hormone. Then propyl thiouracil, propyl thiouracil, what does it do? It blocks the peroxidase enzyme. And uh, peroxidase enzyme is required uh, for the tyrosine to be iodinated. It causes iodination of tyrosine, which is a very important step in the formation of thyroid hormone. So it blocks this step. And it also blocks the coupling sequence. When uh, iodinated tyrosins, they are coupled with one another to form thyroid hormones. So propyl thiouracil, it uh, blocks the peroxidase. It blocks the coupling of tyro iodinated tyrosins. So it beats the formation of thyroid hormone. And what does iodide? Uh, this is a university question. What is the role of iodide? So iodide in high concentration they decrease the thyroid activity and the thyroid gland size. Uh, iodide, they reduce also, uh, like thiocyanate, they reduce iodide trapping and um, decrease iodine is available in the cell to form thyroid hormone. Plus also, it is important that it blocks the endocytosis. If you remember uh, the synthesis of thyroid hormone, uh, there will be endocytosis of colloid by the thyroid cells. So, Colloid comes in, which contains the thyroid hormones, and then they are released in the blood. So iodide block the first step in the release of the thyroid hormone, which is the endocytosis of colloid by the thyroid cell. So it will immediately shut down the thyroid hormone secretion into the blood. And also iodide, they decrease the blood supply of the gland and also decrease the size of the gland. That's why iodides, they are administered two to three weeks before surgery, so to reduce the amount of bleeding. And then we have the radioactive iodine. Radioactive iodine is also administered to destroy the thyroid cells. Here we have a one clinical scenario that uh, a 37-year-old female presents with hyperpyrexia, insomnia, increased sweating, anxiety, muscle weakness, and palpitation. So you can see that here are the features of increased thyroid hormone. She is having more body temperature. She cannot sleep, restless, is having, is perspiring more. She's having anxiety and the muscle weakness plus palpitation. On examination, heart rate will be 120. It's more than 120 per minute. Um, enlarged thyroid gland and exothalmos. There will be protrusion of the eyeball. So, um, Clinically, the patient is presenting with the sign and symptoms of uh, grave disease and uh, we will confirm it by doing the thyroid function test. T3 and T4 will be raised, TSH will be low and TSI uh, that may be present. And then we will uh, go for the treatment which I have told you before.